in the city of Durham, North Carolina, is one of the fastest growing churches in the Triangle, New Life Christian Center. This beautiful and exciting church meets the needs of your entire family. Today, we are privileged to join Pastors Andrew and Cheryl Singletary as they present the Prevailing Word Telecast. Here's Pastor Andrew Singletary. One today, you know, every time that we get ready to begin a, a you know, a new uh, series, we always, uh, you know, we lay our foundation. And, and so today it will be no different. Uh, we're going to uh, lay our foundation. I'm going I'm to uh, introduce you uh, to this uh, series on Money 101. We're going to uh, lay the foundation. And as we go on, we're going to build upon the foundation uh, that we lay. And so today, uh, uh, because of the things that we've done, uh, you know, uh, you know, I took time to minister to sow. Uh, and so today, uh, I'm going to give you uh, this introduction, uh, this foundation today in the miniskirt version. Amen. Everybody say the miniskirt version. Okay, now you know what that is, right? Uh, you know, I'm going to give you the miniskirt version of my introduction uh, today. And the miniskirt version is short enough to be attractive, long enough to cover the subject. All right? That's what we're going to do. We can be, uh, uh, you know, short enough to be attractive, but it's going to be uh, long enough uh, to cover uh, my introduction and my uh, foundation uh, uh, into this, okay? So we're going to be talking about what? We're going to be talking about money, uh, you know, 101. All right, turn me in your Bibles uh, for a moment to Ecclesiastes chapter 7. It's where we want to begin, Ecclesiastes uh, chapter 7. And uh, we want to look at verse number 12, Ecclesiastes chapter 7, and then we're going to look at verse number 12. When you get there, say, I'm there. Okay, okay, y'all got to find Ecclesiastes. That comes after Proverbs, uh, you know, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, uh, you know, and then you'll just find uh, chapter number 7, and then we want to look at uh, verse number uh, 12. Okay, are you there? All right, now notice what it says now. Uh, For wisdom is a defense, and money is a defense, but the excellence of knowledge is that wisdom giveth life uh, to them that have it. Uh, Y'all there? Notice what it says now. For wisdom is a defense and money is a defense. I want you to underline that. And money is a defense. Do y'all see that? Now notice now that it is the Bible that says that money is a defense. Amen. So here we see that the, uh, here we see that money is a defense. Everybody say money is a defense. Come on, say it again. Okay, look up here. Everybody on this side say money is the defense. defense. Everybody on this side say money is the defense. All right, so notice now it is the Bible that says that money is a defense. Okay, and so the Bible is letting you and I know that money is a defense. So I want to begin by asking you uh, two questions, okay? Notice now that the Bible says money is a what? is a defense. Now, I want you to circle that word defense for a moment. Amen. Circle that word defense. Now, uh, uh, my first question is, question number one is, what is a defense? That's a very important question because the Bible says that money is a defense. So the Bible is telling us that money is a defense. And so if we don't know what a defense is, then you and I, we're not going to know what money is to us. Isn't that right? Because the Bible says that money is a what? It is a defense. Notice now, it's not the pastor that said that money is a defense. It's the Bible that says that money is a defense. So, if we don't know what a defense is, then we're not going to know what money is to us. See, so we got to find out what a defense is. And once we find out what a defense is, then we'll know what money is to us. Because the Bible declares that money is a what? It is a defense. Okay? So my question was, and still is with question number one, is what is a defense? Okay? So let's, def- uh, let's define defense. Defense Defense, it means to guard and protect you. That's what defense means. It means to guard and protect you. Say that with me. Say defense, it means to guard and protect me. Yeah, and so the Bible says that money is a defense. 
It is to God and protect you. Isn't that what your Bible says? Money is a defense. And we said defense, it means to guard and protect. Uh, you, you know, uh, you know in, in the sports of football, they have an offense and a what? And a defense. And the defense is to do what? The defense is to guard and protect uh, the quarterback so that he can get to play, right? Well, the same thing it is, uh, you, you know, in the spirit realm. The Bible says that money is a defense. Amen. That money will do what? It'll guard and protect you. Isn't that right? Money is a defense, and it will do what? It will guard and uh, protect you. Now, give me two people up here uh, real quickly, two men. Give me two men real quickly up here. All right, and so it is the Bible that says that uh, money is a defense and that it will uh, guard and uh, protect you, right? All right, now, question number two. Money will guard and protect you against what? See? M- m- question number two, money will guard and protect you against what? See, the Bible says that money is a defense. Money will guard you and protect you. Isn't that what the Bible says? And so my question was, and still is for question number two, money will guard and protect you against what? See, if we don't know that, then you and I, we, we're not going to know what money is to us. And the Bible wants us to know, listen to me, in this introduction, in this foundation, the Bible wants you to know, first of all, that money is a defense for you. That money will guard and protect you. Somebody said that money will guard and protect you against the enemy. But, but listen to me, child of God, uh, how many of you got money? And your money don't necessarily guard and protect you against the enemy. You know, because the enemy will attack you. The enemy will attack you. He doesn't matter whether or not you got money or not. Come on, say amen to that. But the Bible wants you to know that money is a defense. He says that money, it will guard and protect you. We need to know what will money guard and protect us against. See? See, money has a job. Say that with me. Say, money has a job. Okay? Money has a job. And money's job is to, is to guard and protect us. But we got to know what our money will guard and protect us against. Okay? All right? So my question was, and still is for question number two, money will guard and protect us against what? That's why it's important that we understand money. See? You got to know money got a job. That money you got in your wallet now, that money that you sold, that money, you know, it has a job. And what is its job? It's to guard and protect you. But we got to know what, what will our money guard and protect us against. You ready for the answer? Here's the answer. Uh, here's the answer to question number two. Money will guard and protect you against lack and against poverty. That's what money will guard and protect you again. So therefore, we can read this verse like this. For wisdom is a defense and money is a defense. It will guard and protect you against lack and against poverty. See, that's what money will guard and protect you against. Okay? This is lack and this is poverty. Just for, you know, for... uh, uh, demonstration of uh, purpose. All right, now uh, give me a believer. Uh, give me a man up here, a believer. Let me have a man that's a believer. Okay, okay. Now here, here's the believer. Y'all step over here for a moment. Okay, just not out my way. You, you, you come here, believer. You, 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 you come, believer. This is a believer. Okay, this is a believer. I'm money. Okay, this is the believer. This he represents. He represents you. Okay, he, 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 he represents you. And I'm money. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm money. Okay, so I'm this believer's money. Okay, so the Bible says, let's turn this way. Y'all turn this way, face me. Uh, get side by side. The Bible says that money is a what? Is a defense. That money will guard and protect you against what? Against lack and against poverty. So, 
when lack and poverty try to hit your house, come on, see, your money is a defense. It'll guard and protect you against lack. It'll stop, it'll stop lack. It'll stop, po- y'all supposed to be trying to get in lack and poverty. That's not good. <laughs> Boy, oh, okay, okay. You right here, believer? Okay. Uh, yeah, okay. Okay. See, money is a defense. It will do what? Yeah, it'll guard and protect you against lack and poverty. Every time, stop pushing me so hard. I mean, I mean good. sit down, lack and poverty. Go sit down, lack and poverty. I mean, they they trying to hurt me. I mean, I'm just trying to show a demonstration. And, and he up there trying to break my... Hey, hey, you know, just like, y'all get what I'm talking about? All right, uh, thank you, believer. Oh, Jesus, that didn't go off. Woo. All right, so uh, remind me not to ever use uh, him again. All right, uh, money, <laughs> money, <laughs> money. And so the Bible says that money is a defense. Money will guard and protect you against, uh, against uh, lack and against poverty. See, that's what money, uh, you know, that's what money would do. Listen to me very carefully. The subject of money is one of the most important subjects of your life. The reason why I say money is one of the most important subjects of your life is because most people spend their adult life trying to get money. You know why? Because money is important. Okay. Say that with me. Say money is important. Yeah, money is important. And so most people spend most of their adult life trying to get money. Why? Because money is important. And because money is important, I submit to you that you need money. Whoever you are, you need money. Why? Because money is important. Right? All right? And so the Bible says that money is a... That's right. It's a guard. It will guard you. It will do what? It will protect you. See, money will guard you, it'll protect you against lack and against, uh, you know, and against poverty. And so, child of God, I'm telling you that money is important. It is important. And whoever you are, you need money. Everybody in here today, everybody listening to me under the sound of my voice, they need money. Because money is important. Say that with me. Say money is important. Yeah. And because it's important, you need it into your life. Now, notice what else, uh, you know, look at verse, uh, uh, look at verse number uh, 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 12 again. Notice what it says now. For wisdom is a defense, and money is a defense. No, no, notice now, notice what else is a defense. The Bible says that wisdom is a defense. Underline that word wisdom. It says that for wisdom is a what? Is a defense. So here we see that wisdom is also a, a defense. Okay? Now notice, child of God, notice that wisdom and money go together. Uh-huh. See, see notice how they tie wisdom with money? Says both of them are defense, right? The Bible says that wisdom is a, is is defense. Wisdom will guard and protect you. Money will guard and protect you. So wisdom and money always should go together. Wisdom and money. Say that with me. Say wisdom and money. They go together. Come on, say it again. Yeah, wisdom and money they go together. See, anytime you talk about money, you got to start talking about wisdom because wisdom and money are goes uh, together. Wisdom and money go together like the water with the wet. See, if you ask for water, you're going to get the wet. You can't separate wet from water, right? And you can't separate wisdom from money. Wisdom and money go together like the hand in the glove. You can't separate them. See? Wisdom always should follow money. 
That's the reason why, listen to me, this is the reason why when you see people, you know, they hit the lottery, you know, and they win all of these millions and millions of dollars, and then five years later, they broke all the government and all that. You know why? Because they didn't have wisdom. See, wisdom got to go with money. See, they didn't have wisdom, and so therefore, I mean, you know, they had, uh, 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 you know, 50, 60, uh, you know, millions of dollars, and five years they broke over the government. Why? Because they didn't have, they didn't have wisdom. Wisdom has to go with money. If you don't have wisdom with your money, then your money, listen to me, your money, your money will not be a defense for you. Your money will not guard and protect you against poverty and lack if you don't add wisdom to your money. See? You have to add wisdom to your money. So the Bible says that wisdom is a defense and money is a defense. So wisdom and money always go together. Isn't that right? All right? You cannot uh, separate uh, 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 wisdom from money. Money from wisdom. They go together. And so, since wisdom is a defense, since wisdom will guard and protect you, I submit to you that when I add wisdom, or when you add wisdom to your money, then, child of God, you will have double protection against lack and against poverty. Double protection. Why? Because you got wisdom with your money. See? You got wisdom. So now, when you add wisdom uh, to your money, you got double protection against wisdom and lack because wisdom is going to show you how to handle your money. Isn't that right? And so the Bible says that uh, wisdom is a defense. So money to us, listen to me, money to us means that money, it will guard us, it will protect us against lack and poverty when you add wisdom to it. Just money alone, listen to me, just money alone will not, uh, uh, will not give you the protection that you need. Money is a defense. But like I said, you can't separate it from what? You can't separate money from wisdom. That's why the Bible says that wisdom is a defense and money is a defense. Why? Because wisdom and money go together. I've seen a whole lot of people, you know, they have money, but they ain't got no wisdom. See? They don't have no wisdom. They don't add wisdom uh, to their money. And so, therefore, uh, lack and poverty are come in on them. They just have their money for a season. Just like some people that hit the lottery. They just have their money for a season. Because they ain't got no wisdom. You know, you got to have, you got to have wisdom uh, when it comes to your money. And I know a whole lot of people, I mean, you know, they don't have wisdom, uh, you know, when it comes to their uh, money. And so I'm telling you, you got to add wisdom uh, to your uh, money. Okay. Okay. Now, um, you remember I said that whoever you are, that you need money. You remember that? Okay. Now. The more that you know about money, the more that you learn about money, the more money you can have. Did, did you understand what I'm saying? I said that the more that you know about money, the more that you learn about money, the more money uh, you can have. How many of you want to change your financial destiny? Okay. Mostly everybody wants to change their financial uh, destiny. We all want to do more and have more with our money, right? Well, if, you're, if you want to change your financial destiny, then you're going to have to understand money. I'm telling you, you're going to have to understand money. Your understanding of money is going to determine whether or not you keep it or lose it. It's your choice. I'm going to say that again. Your understanding of money will determine whether or not you're going to keep money or lose money. It's your choice. So if you and I are planning on changing our financial destiny, then you and I, then you and I are going to have to have an understanding of money. We got to have an understanding of money, you and I. Because money is important to us as a, uh, you know, as a person. You know, I'm not even saying as a Christian, surely it's important to us as a Christian. I'm just talking about as a person, money is important to us. People that don't know God, money is important to them. 
Because all everybody on the face of the earth, they need money. Say money is important. Yeah. So if you want to uh, change your financial destiny, uh, then child of God, we're going to have to understand, you and I, we're going to have to understand uh, money. Now, the purpose of this series is to help you to change the way you think about money. Because I know, because I know most people, you know, they think wrong about money. So the purpose of this series is to change the way you think about money. See, say this with me. Say, the Word of God wants to change the way you think about money. Okay. Now, I'm going to tell you, uh, I'm going to tell you uh, what I know, and then I'm going to tell you what I know about people when it comes to money. Okay. Here's what I know when it comes to money. I know that money is a sensitive subject. See, I know that money, listen to me, I know that the subject of money has been abused. See, that's, that's what I know. But child of God, I know and I believe that this is the time, this is the season, that we ought to teach the Word of God concerning money. So I know, so, so, so I know that money is a, is a very sensitive uh, subject. I know that the subject of money has been abused. But I also know this, that this is the time and season that we ought to teach the Word of God concerning money. Okay? Now here's what I know about people. Now when I say people, you are included. Here's what I know about people when it comes to money. People think, when you start teaching about money, that you're trying to get them to give more money to the church. See? I know this about money. See? I know when I start talking about money this morning, laying the foundation, I mean, you know, some of you think, oh, well, you know, he's going to try to get us to give more money to the church. You know, he's trying to do that. No, 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 no. See, this is what I know about people. When people start hearing you teach about money, the first thing they think is that you're trying to get them to give more money to the church. That's what they think. I know that about people. See, But listen to me, child of God. I don't teach on money to try to get you to give more money to the church. That's not my reason for teaching on money. The reason I teach on money is because people are struggling with money. And they need help. So therefore, it is my pastoral duty to help them with their money. See? I'm not teaching no money to try to get you to give more money to the church. I know, I know that people are struggling with money. And they need help. So that's giving me an opportunity to help them with their money. You know? So this is what I know when they start, uh, you know, when you start talking about money, uh, people begin to get, I mean, you know, they begin to get fidgety and stuff, you know, because, you know, oh, well, you, you know, oh, he may take up another offering because, uh, I mean, you know, he want us to give more money to the church. No, 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 I'm teaching on money because I'm telling it's people in here struggling with money. There's people in here struggling with money. And they need help. See? As I teach this series on Money 101, here's what I want you to do for me. I want you to invite your, uh, uh, invite your unsaved co-workers. Invite uh, your unsaved neighbor. You know why? Because they got money problems. And I can help them with their money. You see, when, uh, when you help people with their money, more than likely they're willing to let you help them with their life. And I know people are struggling with money. I know people don't have enough money. I know people that need money all the time. And one of the reasons why they're struggling with money, and one of the reasons why they need money all the time, is because most people don't know how to handle money, and don't know what money is to them, and don't know what the Bible says about money. And most people don't know how to increase their money. See? 
And so I want you to invite your unsaved co-workers. They got money problems. <laughs> invite your unsaved neighbor. They got money problems. And I can help them with their money problems. And more than likely, if, uh, you know, if I can help them with their money problems, more than likely they'll let me help them with their life. See? Because money is important to people. To everybody. Money is important to you. That's why, that's why I understand when people say, uh, you, you, you know, why is he teaching on money in the church? The church is the best place in the world to teach people about money. See? This is the best season, the best time in, in the world is to teach, is to, you know, is to teach people, is to teach uh, people about money. Okay, it's to teach people about money. And so, and so this is my uh, opportunity is to help people who are struggling uh, with money. See, that just like this morning, uh, you know, uh, we, we, we sold, uh, uh, you know, we sold a, a good seed uh, this morning, right? And uh, I believe that, listen to me, some people were struggling with money. Some people were saying, you know, I ain't got enough now. So uh, some people didn't do anything. You know why? Because they don't know what money is. They don't know what money is to them. They, 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 don't, they don't understand and realize money that holds in your hand can never increase. If you keep your money in your hand and it ain't even enough, there's no way in the world that God can increase your money. For money to increase and grow, it's got to be planted. It's got to be sold. Uh -huh. You ask a farmer, okay, how much a farmer wants some beans and he wants some of this. He wants the biggest uh, farm, garden there is. If he don't get out there and sow some seed, uh, you know, uh, that ain't even a pipe dream. He just fooling himself. Why? Because in order to get what he wants, he got to what? He got to sow seed. It's the same word it is when it comes to money. See? And because some people, are, are, you, 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 you know, uh, how they think about money and don't know what God says about money, so you know what they do? They hold on to the little bit that they got, and that ain't even enough. And so therefore, their money can never increase. That's why I need to teach. I know that this is the season and the time for me uh, to teach the Word of God concerning money. Are you looking for a church that meets the needs of your entire family? Well, if you are, New Life Christian Center is the church for you. Pastors Andrew and Cheryl Singletary personally invite you to be part of one of the fastest growing churches in the Triangle. New Life Christian Center is where we produce the Prevailing Word TV broadcast. Service times are Sunday morning at 10 a.m. and every Tuesday night at 7 p.m. We provide children's church at our Sunday morning services. We provide ministries for women, men, singles, and teens. Come visit us at 7415 Fayetteville Road in Durham, North Carolina. For more information, visit us on the web at www.theprevailingword.org or call us at 919-405-2080. New Life Christian Center, where the word prevails.